Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Jess Marshall Podcast. It's our 44th episode. I know 44 seems like a bunch, but every single one's been a ton of fun, and this one is going to be a bunch of fun as well. I've got the privilege and the honor of having my buddy Tony Sicilian on the podcast today. He's with Investmark Mortgage and Sicilian Brothers Real Estate. He's a very talented and skilled real estate investor, but he's also a very savvy entrepreneur, and he lives his life uh, in a DIY, no fear fashion, which I love. So I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hope you take something from it. We'll talk to y'all after. Yeah, ninety percent of the United States obese. Wow. Um, what's that mean? <laughs> well, well, she probably had a definition. She actually didn't. They didn't. He didn't let them or go down that rabbit hole of like what is obesity, right? Because. There's morbidly obese. There's yeah, there's a lot obese, of definitions. Right? There's so many different yeah. layers to it. Uh, and anyway, so I just thought when I heard that number, I was like, oh, that's crazy. And I also thought what was more interesting was, uh, and I, I do love this about Joe Rogan, because he's able to be like, oh, I'm on the carnivore diet, but not everyone should be on the carnivore diet. Like, it's working great for me, but that doesn't mean that you should go do it, right? Well, don't you think it's refreshing that he doesn't make these broad, sweeping comments and just be like, and I hate you if you yeah. try veganism? Yeah. Which the other yes. way around is... They hate you. Yeah. yeah. Can't believe that you would eat cow, how? man. Oh, well... <laughs> Tony, well, fuck, Yeah, how, how are you going to hurt that per that, that cow's feel or the fish's God. feelings or the, or the cow's feelings? Really, right? when like, I think about it... The, it hurts my heart. We're both like, uh, you know, like red blooded Americans in the sense that, like, I'm sure there is some mistreatment of animals. Certainly, out there, there is. And, I grew up farming. Yeah, yes. and so, so not all of it's right, but nothing's all right. Like, no, like, in fact, isn't that then what we call extremism? Mm -hmm. My view is right. Your view is wrong. I was reading this. Um, I read the Daily Stoic um, every day. It's just kind of my, sort of my, it's a good way to get, to get started. And I was just thinking about the fact that when someone wrongs you, they don't actually, most of the time, do it knowingly. Hmm. They actually think they're right. They're actually doing something, acting in a way, whether they're rationalizing and justifying it in a way that I think is proper is kind of beside the point. If I could identify better and then think about it the way they're thinking about it, maybe I would come to a better understanding. Doesn't mean if they rip me off and owe me 20K, they don't owe me 20K. Or if they're trying to frivolously sue me for some bullshit, no. Yeah. I've still got to defend myself or I'll have nothing to provide for my family with. But I thought that was interesting. I was like, hmm, I never really thought of it that way. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the majority of people are uh, like they – I don't – the majority of people, I would believe, or I would think the good in me, would believe that they're not out to screw people, yeah. right? Now, there are the Madoffs out there, yes. right? Uh, and we're in business, mm -hmm. and in, in business for ourselves, so this is a really gray area. Yeah. Because my business becomes personal, so f I don't... I, it's just how it's always been. Yeah. If something goes really wrong at work, yeah, I'm not going to have a great night. Oh, and, and, and then you... So you... It's it's funny because uh, you know I follow you on social media, Instagram, and stuff, and like I see your builds, and I'm like, oh man, that's that's a badass roof that he did. And then uh, I could just in my mind, I go into the business side of it, yeah. and I'm like, oh man, he's got to get so stressed out because <laughs> if that 60k roof or whatever the cost is, right? Like those metal roofs are, you know, yeah. like there's so much pressure. Oh man, right? Uh, from the from the homeowner's standpoint, yep. and I'm not dealing with homeowners. Like, I'm dealing with my I know, houses. and I think you guys are thinking about maybe starting that. Yes. And when Ryan asked me about that, I wanted to, in all caps, go <laughs> take their phones and their car keys. Don't fucking do it. I mean, do it. You guys do unbelievable work, man. Your finishes on stuff, I'm just like, damn. Yeah. We're we're gonna do prepare uh, yourself for the yeah. whirlwind because everybody thinks that that should be should take thirty minutes and you should be able to pull a canvas painting away and see the new house after thirty minutes, man. Move that bus. Yeah, you can thank Chip, Joe, Ty Pennington for mm. all that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's not as easy as it is on TV. <laughs> Actually, uh, nothing is. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, 
<laughs> we all see how like true love is supposed to be on TV and shows and stuff, and you're like, yeah, I don't know, man. It's never really, it's never really worked that way for me. But maybe that's just a me problem. Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we all just need to go live in Hollywood, and then we would all have perfect lives. I really feel like you're onto something there. The just intense, you know, pragmatic grounding. That would happen where you really are living there where the rubber meets the road and you're just like, man, I don't know if everyone had a Tesla, the world would be just a better place, even though it takes coal to make electricity. Oh, wait, never mind. What about I the, don't know. Man. What about the, the batteries? The, the the mining of the batteries. Yeah, and Has all anybody, of have the you ever seen, yes. Have you ever seen what a battery mine looks like? Yes. Have you seen? I mean, ha, most of the conflicts in Africa mm -hmm. are based around the minerals that go in cell phone batteries, and people are like, "Why is there everyone? Is everyone warring?" And you're, but it, but come on. But if you're complaining about gas prices, you should buy a Tesla. That's right. Yes. Yes. Because electricity is magic. Yes. It just appears it just comes out of the aura of celebrities you just plug it into like the aura outlet and you just get like just a matthew mcconaughey like energy surge hey careful he's a texan he's, he's awesome he's a, he's a i was in austin all he's, weekend he's and i was texan. like i i was at this at this house bro i've sent you this video i took there incredible just incredible, and I didn't really know that the, those types of spots exist. I knew there were nice places in yeah. Austin, but up on the hills where you you feel like you're in the in the hills in Seattle or uh, parts of you know California, yeah, yeah. just pretty amazing stuff. But those rolling hills out on the what would be the west side of yes. Austin, right? That hill country, yes, uh, in Barton uh, Springs, Barton Creek, Barton yeah, Barton Creek, Creek yeah, uh, Spring, yeah, that whole area yep. is just like. Majestical, yeah, it is, man. Um, but yeah, the the uh, the use of common sense doesn't seem to be as prevalent as maybe we would prefer for it to be. Yeah, I think I think I think it's a uh, because everyone's listening to everyone else instead of thinking for themselves. Well, right? we're not qualified to think for ourselves. I was told that I've been told that by the government since February of 2020. Yes, that's. And I was like, "Oh, I'm not okay." Was it well? Was it February? Of yeah, February 2020 is like... end of Jan, yeah. end of Feb, and then it yeah. all took off in March, March, beginning of March. God, can you believe it's been that long? Don't say the magic words, or they might flag like, the podcast, Tony. It's... But uh, no. And I was talking to one of the gals who works with us today, and I was like, "It feels like we closed our eyes, like right after Christmas of 2019." And all of a sudden, it was Christmas of 2021. Yeah. And I'm, you're just like, okay, I, I've been awake this whole time, right? Yeah. But it just seems very, I don't know, there's just this disassociated, disassociative uh, piece in there where you're just like, I can't deal with this anymore right now. I think I'm, uh, I don't think I've ever spoken publicly about this, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, Public opinion debut, folks. So I... Uh, I've been sober for almost three years. So um, rad, man. May Bro. May fourth will be three full years. Um, God is big. So I wake up uh, every day somehow sober in this shit storm that yeah, we're in. Right. Um, but I have days where I wake up and I'm like, Nah, I'm, I'm dead. Like we're I'm in a coma somewhere. Uh, like I never like I from uh, my overdose and you know I was actually dead and then someone resuscitated me wow. right so that happened and uh so there's this weird thing in my mind that's like i all this is so surreal it's not really happening yeah this is not happening like i'm in a coma somewhere and this is just like or i'm stuck in the middle life or the afterlife it's like this is yeah like yeah. this is not real that's how i actually feel on certain days not every day yeah. but it's it's that crazy wow i've never experienced times like this in just in life in business or in the real estate business what was your uh what was your consciousness like when you di died and got brought back do you remember it was there an yeah. experience attached to it uh no there was no um you know there was no white light yeah that without going down that part of it the the 
the thing that I could say that's really amazing is the immense pain that comes. Like you, uh, you're like emotional you're pain. No physical pain. Physical. Yeah, physical or um, nerve pain. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and you almost never. I mean, I there are still parts of my nervous system that are you know kind of like firing and or misfiring and, and damaged mm. right so that the it was weird because the way i went down um so your senses go out in a sense uh so if you like slowly throw the breakers and you don't just throw the the, the main breaker off and go yeah. down it was like sound wow. uh you know smell like just the shutting the just system. slowly go down wow, and then really? they came back on in the reverse so the 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 first one to go out was sound and the last one to come back on was sound and uh, what so, did they narcan you back no or? no uh somebody actually had to like cpr you cpr me yeah yeah um yeah because it wasn't like uh i didn't have a uh it wasn't like i had a uh like a a drug overdose or anything like that. That uh, substance abuse, though, almost cost you your life. Yeah. Is that when, was that the turning point? Or did it take, did something else happen that became the catalyst to? No, that, that, that moment was the, you know, waking up and seeing everyone else's reactions, because I was at a party, um, for instance, my mom or my brothers and whatever, uh, seeing people who cared about me is like, like what they had just experienced. Like in my brain, I couldn't comprehend what was going on, but you know, and I actually, uh, and I couldn't hear for minutes. So like my eyes were working and I'm like, what's going on? uh, but ever since that moment, I just threw everything away and I started all over again. Did you work a program no. or did it really? Yeah. No. So a cold turkey, I'm done, and I'm moving forward. Yeah. And wow. I'm, I'm like, that I'm, is not very common, my friend. I know, and uh, uh, I'm just a. My best friend will tell you I'm a stubborn son of a bitch. That's why we get along uh, so well. And I just, yeah. if I make up my mind, it's just that's it. Uh, they wouldn't. They didn't. I'll, I'll never forget this. The lady didn't want to let me. I was in the hospital for seven days, and uh, jeez, she she didn't want to let me leave. Uh, they she was pushing for me to go to rehab yeah and i was like no i'm i'm good and she kept me and and did as many tests as she could and like i feel trying like in a sense she was trying to like you buy me time yeah. and help me out sure. and then uh and then no she just uh she was like the last day i remember she came in and she goes uh anthony and she goes please please just let me take you from here to rehab and i was like doc i was like you don't understand. I'm done. She's like, I could just, I feel like what she wanted to say was, everyone says everyone that, but says they're not that. done, you know? Probably and is I'll, what she wanted to say. And I, was, and I was like, yeah, but you've never met me, ah, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so ever, ever since then, uh, I just, but, but I say all that to say that, like, this world that I'm now living in is so, like, warped. That I'm, I'm, I'm questioning my, my sense ah. of self and my reality of, you know, it's, it's that, it's that weird, right? Yeah. Like everything that we're witnessing right now is so unique, uh, to business, to supply chain problems, to like kids in to school, the fucking like, human condition in general. Like <laughs> it's, it's just so weird, right? Yeah. You can't. Have you ever been able to look back in your life and? And see a, cons a problem with every facet of something? No. Right? No. Like, like I, I wake up and I'm like, oh, what's today's, what's today's new one? Yeah. You know? When you talk to people, especially like very deeply spiritual people, they'll always lead with the, well, you know, this is a, this is a conscious plane that we're on, but there are others. Yeah. Um, and I just think that we're actually seeing, and it doesn't matter really if you're a person of faith or not, everyone knows somewhere that there's more to this life, whether we can see it or 
you can prove it to me with some sort of right. evidence if I was a scientist. doesn't really matter. I know there's something more. And now it's like we're almost seeing that reveal itself on this plane of consciousness that we're that everyone's on and some people are like okay something's not right and right away they were i was one of those people i was like no 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 also don't come at me with do this do this do this or i'm gonna do that that and that that's just how i'm wired no you are too but it's very i i think it's cool i don't like that so many lives have been lost Man, so many addicts have overdosed. Oh. So many people are depressed. So many people are just lost right now. Yeah. They don't know to start, to stop. Who do I listen to? And the programmed people are like, okay, what's the next set of instructions? I said to I said to Ryan yesterday, I was like, Ryan, somehow I survived the last three, like <laughs> the last three years, arguably maybe the worst three years of my life. I've survived them sober. It's crazy, man. Like, that's a fucking miracle. Now, uh, that being said, I, I think I've met a, a lot of uh, I was raised Catholic, uh, regardless of what I would identify as now. Like, I have friends of mine that think like, oh, this is the end times. Like, this is definitely the end of the world and all that. And, mm. and it's like, I feel like if you go down that rabbit hole, it's like you're going to. It's gonna come to fruition, right? Yeah. I feel like if we could just wake one another up on a not on a like a crazy left, right, Democrat, Republican, just a human level. Just wake people up and be like, Hey, look, I think you're okay. Like we're all okay. And it's gonna be okay. Yeah. And and we don't have to go like reinvent the wheel and like take kids out of school or throw the like, baby out with the bath water yeah and, no like it's just we just have to calm let's down. teach four-year-olds about stuff in florida or you not know, or not or not and then let's make a big deal even mm -hmm. though we don't know what the issue is yeah it's it's really weird we've learned so much about who people are as people yes in the last two um i would say in the last five because as soon as the political climate changed five years ago the way it did. Yeah. Um, and even leading up to that, the, the, the division was palpable. Whenever something feels really good, feels so good to get mad at the other person with the other view, and you're like, yeah, fuck them. It's like we should all be having this crisis of conscience going, no, something's wrong. Yeah. Something's not right. I'm being told to hate. No, that's not what any of the main teachers like have ever said. Doesn't really matter what the religion is yeah, or the Yeah, but whoever the main that main prophet, prophet or leader right? or was it was it's never forgive. Yeah, it's never uh, uh, it's never pieces within you. Mm -hmm. Um it's just uh it's just hard to wrap your mind around it. Mostly cuz so many people are really hurting. And I started this with Ryan when, right when COVID was starting, because yeah. I was just like, man, there are a lot of really scared people. Yeah. And I'm not scared. And I don't, I'm not like, I'm fucking fearless, because I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a man with fears, whatever. Um, Like, I don't have kids yet. Do I want to bring a kid into this shit? What the fuck, man? I, I don't have kids. I have 10 nieces and nephews. And uh, I was just so happened to be on babysitting duty the last uh, three days, because mm. my mom was in Florida. Nice. So. Uh, no, it's fun. Like you pick up a seven-year-old and a four-year-old from school, you know, and we're hanging out and you stuff. Bet. And, and I, I just don't know. Wait, like what? What the fuck is their life gonna be like? Yes, I just turned forty. My nephew's got like, how, do they even have thirty years? That's like what I'm on saying. the road that this shit storm is and it's and it's all because certain people want it to be a certain way and um anyway, that 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 sort of negativity just brews mm -hmm. and you could see it the melting pot and they're like stirring it on yeah. purpose you know the witch's brew of of media is is disturbing and uh, i think it starts like at home uh one person at a time i for instance i made my mom She's not allowed to watch the news. <laughs> we, we cut off cable 
Good. You know, no, no news. Like you know, if I could take Facebook off of her phone, I tried. <laughs> like you might you know. have a real revolt then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but like, just start like one conversation at a time. And then what always bugged me was uh, in like I you there are just some people you can't have a conversation with. Right. You can't sit down and no longer can you sit down and just agree to disagree or be like, oh, that's interesting. Why do you feel like you're wearing a black jacket? Uh, Do you really like the color black? Because I don't really like the way it looks on you. And then all of a sudden it turns into- I think you're actually appropriating that color, (laughs) and I find I'm deeply offended by that. I'm offended. I mean- Well, it's Carhartt. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I I need to leave. Like, And that sort of- that sort like. I was picked on when I was in school. I was I was a big kid. I was I was fat, right? And um, I've been fat my whole life. I'm still fat. Come on, but but um, You're looking sexy over there. <laughs> it's taking a lot of money. Sexy time. lumberjack. Um, the like I feel like those days of being picked on, like you know, they made me not stronger, like but like resilient. Yeah, to resilient to want to either associate with people that were better or right or or know which roads not to go down mm-hmm. and i don't i don't i don't know why but the the age of technology has kind of taken that it's made resilience it's made everything so easy i and it's i don't even have to go hunt or gather I was just about to say I that press a button and I a did, hamburger is on my front doorstep i did i did explain this to someone that you know when i was picked on in school and then I got off the bus. It was over. Mm. I was home. I was with my brothers. I was safe. with my neighbor. I was safe. Now they're not home. They're they're not safe anywhere because that digital device is everywhere. Yes. Right. So so it's no longer just being in school and picked on in school. It's going with them on Instagram all the way up until bedtime through dinner. Right. Like it's just constant. last thing you see before you. Close your eyes to, to to snag some rest. Is somebody mm-hmm. telling you you are less than, yeah. or or they got kids are just kids are so innocent, but they're so cruel too. It's yes. just crazy. And I don't, I don't. A lot of them don't even realize how. No, cruel. they don't. Like they're they're and their brain, their brain. And let is it twenty five, twenty six is when the brain actually mm-hmm. matures, in, right? In dudes, yes. Like like I so, think it's more like nineteen, eighteen or nineteen in a woman. So from like eight to 18 they're like some of the meanest individuals possible um but uh that being said i i think if it it's just going to take a while for us to kind of rein it back in and be like all right people one-on-one you know um i think in my own family we just now that we stopped talking about it but but we if you take the height the you know the curve oh that fucking word <laughs> the curve uh if you take the curve of it all right like yep. you, there was you know at the high point everyone's it's, it's everywhere it's it's every conversation and like we just had to scale it back and be like done yeah we're done with this we're we're, we're not talking about this anymore yeah. birthday parties dinner parties right now we still have conversations yeah. about sure it but it's not you have to force yourself to take it out of your everyday life otherwise you're never going to get up in the morning i just don't think that people understand how truly powerful they are so a lot of times i think to myself man it's kind of discouraging like i have one vote one vote one voice i can only maybe genuinely touch this many people's lives in a day multiply that times a lifetime that's not that many um but you have the power as the gatekeeper of your own thoughts to go. We're not, I'm not, I'm not letting my mind dine on this bullshit. Yeah. Cause garbage in garbage out mentally. Um, it's just, uh, one of those things. I think it's going to be one of those example type things. Like people look over and they're just like, I, you seem to be living this fulfilled <laughs> life. You seem to be this, you seem to be that what's going on. And then you say, well, you know, I, I, I've taken this approach and I believe this and I work for those beliefs. I don't just have them and I'm done. I'm on a journey myself. Um, I don't know, man. And I think that's kind of our place now. I've shifted from this place where I was just real angry and just like, you know, 
fuck the science yes yeah. and the person who calls themselves <laughs> that or whatever and now i'm like okay there's a reason i'm not afraid and instead of being like why aren't they how about if i just show them this is how you live a life that's not based in fear i was i was gonna i was uh I was going to bring up a, a, a topic and you kind of just touched on it. It was like, uh, I'm neither pro mask or anti mask. Uh, I, I live my life the way I want to live my life. Right. Uh, so I think there's a, some interesting, there's an interesting thing that I've been observing, uh, where like people pick on one another. So like the bullies, if you will, like, and it's on both sides. So, there are people that wear masks that like bully the people that don't. And then there are people that don't wear them and then like make fun of the people who do. Right. And maybe we could just like stop that being childish, like, you know, children and just who, who fucking cares? Like, okay. If you feel you need to wear one, wear one. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, it, there are there are moments, and I could just be honest about this. Like there are moments when I see someone driving in their car with a mask on <laughs> by themselves, and I I find myself thinking like that's weird. But then I I start to like oh okay, you know what I, you're better than me. My thoughts are much more aggressive. Well, than and that. and and they probably weren't <laughs> always that like Cold. you know that yeah. that calm. But but not, that's not, my, not quite always that chi. Yeah. Yeah, but but you just have to, right? Because if if yeah. if I if I get angry and then like it just you just it's just that energy that's out there that we can't get, we just have to stop putting out there. Well, but yeah, no, city I like of Dallas, your style, dog. City, <laughs> city of Dallas needs to get their shit together. Um, they they are standing in the way of a lot of progress. A lot of potholes in Dallas, are there not? Uh, like, what does it take to fix the streets? Tax dollars. How do you build your tax tax tax? Base through fucking construction. What are you doing? Can't even get a. I can't even get a. You get. I haven't. I'm not building lots of stuff and flipping lots of stuff right now. But I got to put fences up. Yeah. Got to get a permit. Uh, this is not rocket science, no. man. And you got to talk to like nine people. Just send it in online. It'll be approved. You'll be good in like 24 hours. Here I'm like 28 days later going, the fuck, bro? Well, it's, it's two weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> it's, it's, it's two weeks. It's two weeks. Oh, I can't believe I brought on someone so controversial. It's, it's two weeks to build a, the fence. Uh, it's two weeks to type the, uh, the permit. Yes. The, the thing that gets me with the city of Dallas, and uh, I have actually made some friends in the inspectors. The inspectors are just like any other city they employee, are. right? Like, they're yeah. not bad guys. No. They're not. Once you get down to meeting them and yeah. getting them on a job site, what blows my mind is that, um, I and I know the areas in which I'm going to get certain inspectors. Yes. Uh. So when I know I'm going to get certain inspectors, I do things in maybe a little bit of a different order sure. to try to, like, help facilitate and make sure they don't get upset, something mm -hmm. like that, right? Uh, but what blows my mind is that the city of Dallas, they, they you know, there's, like, there's only a, a handful of inspectors, mm -hmm. right? And they have all these projects, and they're underpaid. And I don't want to say that they're undereducated, you know. They're just going off of a, a of a of a spec sheet saying, mm -hmm. "Oh well, you know this house that was built in 1952 has to be brought up to now 20 uh, 2020 standards, mm -hmm. right? That's, they're using building yes. codes from 2020. So like, so so 2020, and and you're thinking to yourself like, who the fuck can who who? How's that even possible? Well, and yeah. what what then triggers like what I get super frustrated with is there's two different sets of rules. Which is apparently how the world works. I just, yeah, maybe that's yeah, how the right. It is, yeah, yes, right. Yes. So there's two different sets of rules. <laughs> rules, yes, bro. <laughs> rules for homeowners and rules for business people. Yeah. And the rules for the homeowners. So my house is usually across from another really crappy house, mm -hmm. and the standards that I have to be held on my investment property that I'm either fixing to flip or fixing to sell. Uh, sorry, fixing to sell or fixing to rent uh, is is like 10 times that of the mm -hmm. person who's the homeowner. And I think that, that like, I don't know, there's a little bit of overreach there that, that I think is unjust. And I think 
we need to get like we just need to get people to realize that no house is ever going to be perfect. No, no project is ever going to be perfect. Right. Uh, and and the city of Dallas needs to hire more inspectors to actually do what needs to be done to progress uh, building the future. They of can't Dallas. pay them, and so the good ones who know anything worth a damn about building just go to Plano or Flower Mound. Can they? Can they not pay them because they don't have enough money, or can they not pay them because the money is being misspent? Maybe it's being spent on yellow and blue lighting. Yes. I don't know. Mike, can you pull up and see if there's a rating of the worst big city building departments? Oh, there's definitely. Because I know know all those union cities are even worse. But, I mean, Dallas is really bad. Yeah. And we're in Texas, and for the most part, and I'm not from here. You from here? Did you grow up here in Texas? No, I grew up in New York. Oh, okay. I'm I'm used to – so I can actually – absorb a lot of the yeah permit you can bullshit roll with is that. like the city of new york has some oh, of yeah, the bro. craziest building restrictions um but did you know that uh like the city if i'm not mistaken uh someone can fact check me on this uh austin just lost a lawsuit so the city themselves were sued by the homeowners of austin because they didn't like the boundary restrictions on like what could and could not be built. Really? So like so uh zoning laws, right? So so the city of Austin just lost a big lawsuit to the homeowners over zoning laws. Um which I also like I do think I am not a big oversight like overreaching. I do not want big government, but I do think that there should be some rules and regs, right? Um but uh there's there's a uh, yeah, that that's the that's the city of Austin losing the, the land development code. There must be must have been some legal provision because a lot of times municipalities or other government bodies they can't be sued. They stand they they sit outside the purview <laughs> of which is odd and disturbing. A little bit, very. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it, it was supposed to be about the people. No, it's never about the people. No. No, no. no but, apparently not. Uh, speaking of homes, uh, I, I this did happen this week. Uh, we, were, we were talking about, you know, how, like, the Will Smith, Chris Rock thing kind of, like, derailed everyone's, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Which I think uh, is an underlying tone that people are trying to always keep us off of, yes. right? Something. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the... Um, D.R. Horton announced that they're not building any more two-story homes. Uh, That's all a lumber thing, right? Like, yes. Well, they're, they're, they're. I mean, their statement says it's a lumber thing. I don't get the rationale behind that. So you could build two one stories right next to each other, but you can't get the lumber to throw a second story on one of them. I would think that a lot of it has to do with, in addition to that, uh, your. You know, uh, when you're doing a two story, you're doing LDLs and right. Yeah, so you're doing, and those are and, difficult to get your hands on these days. Although, and they're even more, and they're they're even more expensive because yeah. they're the laminated. They have that right. special glue that goes in yeah. them. Like there's they could, so many they different use steel though. But I mean, whatever. Steel is super expensive. The only thing. Oh, that, I know. The <laughs> the only thing that uh, the only thing that um, you're gonna. I think the only thing that's actually creeping. Damn. In that, that's insane. It, that, so I'm gonna make. Uh, I'm gonna Mike make put you, up lumber prices are up 135 percent since 2020. I'm I'm gonna make you dig into that. I know you put it up there for us to read, uh, but actually lumber has kind of been on this interesting it has. roller coaster. It's weird. Um, so we're we're right now back on on the swing, the, fuel. the upswing, yeah. right? But what? Well, you think it's fuel, or do you think it was? So what I see. Every Monday I wake up to like 15 or 20 emails from like my top suppliers. I buy a lot of steel for the, for the roofs. I buy a lot of structural steel for the patio covers and we buy a lot of cedar Mm -hmm. and it's always increased cost of this is causing this. Um, I know our guy who goes around and, uh, fabricates all our panel custom fabricates all those roof panels Mm -hmm. is he just put out a price increase 
Now, he did it poorly because he correlated it to increased cost of materials, and he doesn't actually sell material. <laughs> he just fabricates. So it was like, could I, well, I'm going to help you with your letter yeah, writing. Yeah. Let's get the red herring out of there and the just message. go right at the message. Yeah, but I don't think that the fuel crisis is real. I think there's enough fuel that we don't have to be charging five a gallon, whatever. I work in a lot of insurance on a lot of insurance claims. They're not thrilled. They're having to pay, but they're not paying everything that we're, they're not, the shortfall is not being filled. Sure. And what am I supposed to do? Pay my guys extra on jobs that, where am I getting the extra? You just unboxed like a world of, I know it. of, of problems. And of shit. Back to lumber. Yeah. And I'll just steer the yeah, shit yeah, yeah, back yeah. to yeah, lumber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Because it's a huge problem. Uh, I just spent, uh, Seven like my guy spent seventeen thousand dollars at the depot yesterday. Incredible for for I think it was like two or th- two or three projects they had to get yeah. material for, and I was just like, you know, I, I'm I'm into twenty flips at, right now, and Amazing. it's like you have no choice but to keep. So they're like, well, yeah. what are you going to do? Got to keep going, man. But I I have to I have to finish them. What right. do you mean? What am I going to do? Yep. Like. I'm going to fold up shop, go bankrupt, and walk? Like, no. no. I'm finish the fucking houses. Whether no. or not I make money or lose money, I'm going to pay my guys, and I'm going to pay the store, and I'm going to... Right? Like, it- Well, you understand a tenant that most good entrepreneurs understand, which is just because it got hard doesn't mean it's not working. Right. Doesn't mean we're not on the right path. If I quit now, there's no coming back from that. Yeah. Um, Because actually, in your own mind... You gave yourself an option and you took that option. Yeah. When you when the option to quit isn't even there, you know? The, there is no choice. Yeah. yeah. My parents always told me that when they got to, when they got married that the option of divorce it wasn't even an option. Hmm. It wasn't even, you know, it was this is what we're doing. We made a commitment. That's not even an option. Kobe talks about it all the time. I'm going to go on this vacation with my family, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up at 4 a.m. I'm going to work out for three hours, go do vacation for four hours, go work out for three. You know, there was no option of this isn't going to work. That's a that's a that's a that's a rabbit hole. We could totally yeah. dive down uh, because I think it kind of there's a, there's so many different things. Well, we all give ourselves out. Yes. Right? I'm going to work out. Yes. I got to start working out. I got to yeah. I got to get myself. I'm getting up there in age, whatever. Oh, it's cold this morning. Oh, that one old injury. I don't feel really well, very well. Oh, I could. I only get two hours of sleep. Well, it's, that's uh, it's, again going back to Rogan, right? He's mm-hmm. always like, put the cheeseburger down. Yeah, right. Like, like it's or that- I only have one a week, right? Because he's a he's a guy who likes to enjoy. Uh huh. Yeah. He does talk a lot about staying balanced, though. But but absolute that that word balance. Yep. We've lost. Well, the it's seesaw. illusory. The, so- the seesaw yeah. is totally unbalanced If, if right you now. think that you, I th- either Aristotle or Plato or Socrates said this. If you one think that you, yeah, <laughs> one of the th- one of the th- five smartest people ever to live. If you think that you've accomplished balance on your own, then you're actually pretending deity. You're pretending to be God. Hmm. Balance is not, it's not something I can achieve on my own. No. Now I'm still on this spiritual journey. I don't know if it's like the God that gets worshipped in mega churches is the one who helps me with that, or if it's the universe that I feel like is more like my big brother. It's trying to help me and guide me. I don't know. What I do know is, you know, it's um it's, it's hard to yeah, it is. And uh we we should talk we should talk more about entrepreneurship. It's what is it what's the the most important benefit you've gotten from being an entrepreneur i know my answer what like is can you distill it down to one thing uh so i i um i'm actually going to so my career has been obviously a roller coaster so i think if you are self-employed an entrepreneur and you um have the passion to stay on that road I know so many people who have quit, given up, went back to the nine to five. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I said early when I was talking about my story about being um, insanely uh, like stubborn. Um, 
yeah, there are times when I've laid down and, you know, I was like, I'm, I just, I can't keep going. Uh, somehow, the last three years, I managed to stay sober and keep my guys employed and keep going, right? Um, I think uh, my my younger brother started to work with me uh, in the last, like, three or four years uh, or four or five years now. Um, rugby Nick. And, What's up, Rugby Nick? Yeah. And, uh, hey, we... In the very beginning, you know, brotherly love, right? We mm-hmm. always, I, I have four brothers, so five of us, and we can get into some pretty heated fights. But, <laughs> um, you know, when he first came on, like, he, I, I like, I had this, per, I have a very strong personality to where, like, it's my way. Mm. Right? And so, uh, Nick, Nick was like, oh, your way, you know, there are other ways to do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no. Like no, it's my way. Sure, right, right, and and I don't know. I have definitely taken a bunch of cues from his, you know, his influence over the last three or four years has definitely helped me be a little bit more balanced into like, okay, maybe you know, okay, maybe we could do it this way, right, right. Uh, but I think I think just having, um, I think you asked the benefit, right? The biggest yeah. benefit I I have to my life is that I. I can wake up every day and do whatever I want. Exactly, freedom. That's that's the only, that's, and it and it's my freedom, right? It's the freedom to do like if I want to this, yeah, this, or you know, uh, what's today's Thursday, mm-hmm. so tomorrow, uh, you know, tomorrow I don't really have much on the schedule other than like getting some guys paid, and then I have a doctor's appointment at like five o'clock, and then I'll probably have dinner for Nick's birthday, which because tomorrow's Nick's birthday, nice. And then Saturday uh, and Sunday, I plan to go back to my apartment and sleep. Like, like my life, I'm not, you know, I, I made that conscious decision uh, 20 years ago when I got laid off. I was like, I never want to be held hostage mm-hmm. and told you're only worth $12 an hour or $15 an hour when I felt like I was worth more than that. I always wanted to be in control of my life right and to to, to a degree because right you know there's other powers that be yes right? there but, are uh i just wanted to be i just wanted to be free the huh. wow that's amazing too the um how many how, how many people how i i, I i'm sorry i'm an idiot but yeah, how, many how many people are in the united states um, or like, what would you? Three hundred, right? Three hundred million, right? Because they said at the election, one sixty-two voted, and we were. St- I was still amazed by the fact that three twenty-nine, uh, three hundred thirty million. Uh, is that the actual number? Because uh, did you see twenty? Did you see that the twenty twenty census was off by eighty no. million or something like that? No. Yeah. You missed that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. See, I'm I'm telling you, mm-hmm. news off. So the news off. So you know they, what I turn on now? Just I'm making dinner and I'm not listening to a podcast. It's just The Office on full blast. Oh man, just old Office. I just can't beat it, man. I put it on that and Seinfeld. I put both. Oh my on. god, yeah. Time well, of now you can do every Seinfeld ever on yeah. Netflix if you want. Yeah. yeah. But yes, the U.S. Census in 2020, uh, they admitted uh, that they were off by something like 80 million people. how i don't even I, get it i don't know yeah how do you miscount by 80 well, million Well, tony with all the people who've passed away over the last two years i i don't know man i don't want to get flagged yeah yeah so so i 20 years ago you got laid off what were you doing i was in banking so you know, it's kind of like in the in the. Were you writing loans? Yeah. So yeah. you've understood how loans oh, yeah. and money and compounding and mm-hmm. simple and all that works. I've seen you putting a lot up on your stories recently about rates. Walk me through. What are you talking about there? Like, like, like break this down. Like, I just arrived from the planet Mars, <laughs> and I have no idea. Not like I'm Jess Marshall, in real estate investor dude. So I think. Uh, we're going to talk about the we'll, we'll talk about the real estate investor side of it because mm-hmm. uh, I haven't been in the owner occupied like right I'm going to live in the house side in you know 20 plus years uh, although that side is that's going to be the indicator we haven't seen what's going to happen to that I think 
when those rates start to change, as they say, that's when the shit's going to hit the fan. That's not going to happen until after a certain day in November, is it? Uh, I, You know, I don't know that we're going to make it that far. Yeah. I, I think, mean, it's like hitting critical mass. Yeah. So in, in the last, uh, I will say in the last seven days, the average investor has seen a 2% increase. So, so uh, eight days ago, I could quote you, you know, five and a half, six percent, and that's a thirty-year fixed. Wow, uh, really? Investor loan, right? Oh, not even hard money. No, no, not hard money, right? Just get your thirty-year rental loan, uh, non-conventional, right? Um, not backed by the government, right? Uh, Private money, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the most part, yeah. Yep. Um, those are now uh, probably between, on average, probably right around 8%. Okay. So you've seen a, I've never witnessed a 200%, like, a, or a 200 basis points, two point increase in a week. And in the last week, we've seen two points increase. Incredible. Um, which, what that means to me is I think you're going to see hard money rates, uh, which similarly, uh, the lowest hard money I had seen was probably like in the six, seven range, right? Uh, they're now probably at their base is going to be 10, um, which really means that hard money is probably going to be between 14 and 16. Oh my God. Wow. But no one's talking about that. No. Because if they, if wholesalers talk about that, or if investors talk about that, then, then they can't justify the 82 I mean, to ninety-two percent that they're trying to sell deals at, yeah, right? right? And then they have to, then they have to, you know, worry about losing a deal and and make a lower offer or buy deeper. And uh, no offense to the wholesalers out there, but you cannot. Um, it takes a real human to go into someone's home and offer them fifty cents on the dollar for their house. So that said, and I've heard a lot of diverging opinions about this over the last six months, do you think wholesaling in its current form will be around in even two years? Sure. Yeah. Really? I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Uh, I, and I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think it can, right? Like, it, it's here. It serves a purpose. It and that serves purpose a purpose. And is big enough and to it, sustain it and, it. and there's enough demand. Um, now, should it thin out the herd? Uh, I've been waiting 10 years for the herd to thin out and it's not getting any thinner because yeah. there are so many people that want to get into the space. They want to experience the freedom, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think I saw whether or not it's true, fact checkers, you could check this, but there's more realtors, uh, licensed realtors in the state of Texas than there are like houses. Yeah, more licensed active mm-hmm. Realtors than yeah. houses. Like that when you run their licensed sale. active realtors to actual available properties numbers in the country, it's in, it's insane. I'm like, you're gonna go be a realtor? Yeah. I'm like, badass because you must have brass balls. Just like I've never done this. I don't have a client base. I'm just gonna walk in here and start dunking on motherfuckers, man. And and I don't. I, and I no no. I have no hatred towards realtors. People think I hate them. I I, I don't. I don't hate <laughs> realtors. I I, uh, I I respect them. Um, what I hate are lazy people, right? And yes. So you'll get the lazy realtors that don't fill out the contract the right way, or the right. lazy investor that doesn't put the right selling information sure. or, or legal description on the contract. Like, there's just so many people that just half-ass it. And we are in a time, this like last like 10 or 15 years, where you can trip upwards – you can half ass this and make money. Yeah. But like now it's half ass it, film it, put it on Instagram right. or TikTok and mm-hmm. then like get a photo in front of the Lamborghini and make millions, right? That you like, borrowed. Yeah. Yeah, you you rented it, you know, um, for an hour. The 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 bang to hype ratio these days is just so out of whack. Uh that's a probably a very unfamiliar term to most but if you're a dallas native and you listen to the ticket at all you know mike reiner used to love saying the bang to hype ratio so uh it's we are all hat and absolutely no fucking cattle not like all hat and like a hundred cattle yeah it's just like 
come on, man. Uh, you've seen some of my reaction videos. Well, some of that shit's coming off of horrible quality, coming off of pages where I think they think that, that, that they did the job well, and I'm like, uh, whoa. Um, do, do, you, do you think... What are we doing? Do you think that that just ties back into, you know, uh, and, uh, not pick on news, uh, tech, let's just say technology. Let's just talk about society. It's we're so run by all of this cotton candy content that just if we consume it, it actually makes us less healthy, but we don't know. And it's cotton candy. When you were little, you go to the fair or whatever, and your mom's like, you can have a cotton candy, but you need to eat dinner first. That's not... It's not going to fill you up, and you're like, oh, and you're eating the cotton candy. You need more. You want more. You want more. So the most famous family in our country when it comes to, like, content and entertainment had a father who represented a man who sawed two people's heads off with a steak knife, and then a daughter whose mother recommended a sex tape, then took the sex tape public don't think my mom would ever do that if I ever did that, yeah. but that was all calculated. I don't say that to say fuck them or hate on them. Good. Go do it. If that's what you want to do, they've obviously got a formula. It's working. Take that and then take all the copycats of, I don't have to know Dick, but if I look like and sound like I know Dick, then everyone's going to think I know Dick. And then every other fucking guru who's like... You've been in this space for five months, but let's get you writing a book about it. You know, I, I, and be vulnerable while you're at it, bro. I, I think, but I think the vulnerability is is, is not very insane. many people are actually vulnerable. Right. It's all fucking fake it's bullshit, fake. and yeah. and so's the confidence, right? And well, so I uh, that's that fake it till you make it stuff, which yeah, but, you know, whatever. But I, but that and that worked, like like that will work. For a very short amount of time, yeah. especially in real estate, right? Um, you can't. Uh, you have sales guys, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you have guys like they can go in like, day one, potentially sign a contract sure. to get a roof, right? Yep. Because um, it, not that it's not hard to talk someone into like letting you do the inspection. It's very hard, and it's you know. Yeah, it takes some salesmanship. I, I will say this. I'm not doing it because right. I'm not. I fuck that. I'm not walking on a roof. Let's go, man. So I I will not get on a roof. Uh, I got a commercial gonna... adjustment tomorrow. It's like eight stories. No. You wanna? No. Come no. on. I live on the 27th floor of my building. And I don't come be like on the, my uh, I don't video. Even like going on the balcony. <laughs> yeah. No. I. But but where I was. You going... You do with... have a clutch view. <laughs> Damn. Love what, it. What I whatever I was going with that is like you you can do certain things right without yeah. actually a acquiring all the knowledge and skills to do it right uh but if you stay in that lane and you keep faking it like then you become like fake entirely fake right yeah. and you don't actually switch to success mode and and yeah. and sort you know and then actually like production mode right and it's like almost how you never get to be the boss you just stay the employee no doubt about it i also see other people who have no real skills and yet they're just you know crushing it yeah they do have a skill, though, so we got to cut them some slack in that they're creating content that people want to watch. That's hard to fucking do, yeah. man. Yeah. So whether it's the Paul brothers who everybody wear, you know, wears out, good for them, man. And they're also like, yeah, let's have a boxing match, bro. I don't care about concussions yet. Hell, if I didn't, I'd be like, yo, let's, uh, let's throw it down, man. Um, when you were just getting started as an entrepreneur, did you... Did you identify and then pursue mentors? Uh, no. Did you uh, have an anti-mentor? <laughs> Maybe someone you had worked for before. You were like, every fucking thing that guy did was horrible. I'm going to do it the opposite. Uh, I was telling, I was telling the the team this before uh, we started. Uh, I was like, you know, I've never read, I have never read one real estate book. I've, I have I think not. You're doing yourself a favor there. I have not read Rich Dad Poor Dad or. That's a good book. Um, uh, like I, I, I just. You just got in there and just started doing it. Yeah. So was that 20 years ago? Were you here or were you yeah, up there? No, I was here. You were here. Mm -hmm. You got laid off. You were obviously in banking. Probably do, it sounds like doing some conventional loan writing yep. or originating yep. as well. That goes bye bye. 20 years ago was what? It's 2022 now. O2. So right at the beginning yeah. of the. Yeah. Right. Um. So I watched the I watched I've watched this 
crazy cycle. Boy, yeah, yeah, crazy have. cycle. Right now, uh, that being said, uh, I've you know I've had a uh, I yes I've had uh, good mentors, um, people that I look up to and respect. Um, one of my first mentors, uh, it's like one of the oldest realtors in Dallas and, uh, he passed away probably like 15 years ago, but, uh, the, I'm really good at comping, okay. like pulling comparables and, and, and cause you, uh, use some of your intangibles to, or you, he, he taught me the rules of how to comp okay. so, uh, the any, right way. Yeah. Anyone can look at it. Anyone can like open up any of the yeah. comping softwares out there and like pick things and be like, Oh, that's, that's a good enough range. And right? come up with and a, what up with should a, be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm very analytical when it comes to my comps and awesome. what I can get, which actually plays to my favor in the regard of like, I'm able to see things that other people miss so I'm able to say, no, 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 this is actually bigger, and this falls on this street, which is, you know. So I've found more deals than lost because I'm able to uh, analyze them a little bit better than everybody else. So I owe, like, that skill set to this one gentleman. And uh, he was just a good old country boy from Texas. That's and awesome. He, he was just an amazing individual but yeah i mean you have i've had good mentors i've had some bad ones you know or some like ones that you just get the wrong feeling about mm -hmm. and you're like oh, i don't know that i want to yeah know, don't know that i want to stay like or associate with that person or or, or or go out to lunch is real estate's a huge like oh can we meet for coffee it thing? is and i'm like no i don't have time yeah like yeah let's golf coffee uh lunch i'm like when do you write deals What's the biggest mistake you have made in your entrepreneurship oh. career? Maybe one you've made a few times, and now you're like, oh, no. Hmm. Uh, so I'll, I, I'll start. I, I make them. You know something? All no, right, well, I, I was going to say, like, I make them on a daily basis. I mean something that's been transformative. Something that you're like, okay, maybe the best deals that we can get are going to be the ones that we actually... We look at them, we want them, we run the numbers, and we walk away. It's not going to work out. Was that, did you have lessons you learned there? Or here's mine. I meet someone. They kind of fit the bill. They seem like they might have potential. I, in my mind, I guess it's hubris, I don't know. I'm like, I can work with this person, coach this person, and they will develop ambition and have aspirations, and they will become gritty, and they will hustle, and that doesn't happen. And so now I've removed myself almost completely from my hiring process because my overwhelming optimism blinds me to, no, that's a fucking loser. Yeah, Don't hire that dude, you know? So my other upper management's like, Love them. Let's do it. And I'll be like, okay, cool. I was on board there. Or they'll be like, no, sucks. And I'll be like, damn it. I was wrong again. So that's that's an ongoing lesson I uh, that I have learned and I'm still learning. So I uh, I do better um, because I, I virtually work by myself. Mm. So almost all of these, lone wolf sicilian yeah like almost all these projects and 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 everything that i've accomplished over the last couple of years i'm not saying is all entirely mine that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying i'm very isolated mm -hmm. i keep myself very very isolated my circle's very small um i can attest to this i did i've tried a, to come to some of your get-togethers i did have a uh turned away at the door for no invite yeah yeah um <laughs> you were only because you had a mask on I'm uh, so, <clears throat> um <laughs> so i i i, I was trying to i did signal. add a uh i did have a very catastrophic um hire um mm. last year and it 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 taught me um it's funny because it's not the first time yeah it's the first time it was this bad okay uh but i i like you want to see the good in people yep. right and so if someone comes to me and you know i think they'll fill the void and i can coach them up i'm a terrible teacher don't ever let me teach you um <laughs> did you I, hear that austin i'm i'm like a do as i say not as i yeah. do and a lot of people just do what you do and yeah. not what you say right 
And if you're going to learn from me, listen and do as I say. Do not do what I do. Because right. I'm the only idiot that can be this good at what I do mm -hmm. the way I do it, right? Maybe similar to some of your yeah. antics and tactics, yes. right? Um, Antic is a good word. But I, I think uh, I think taking myself out of the driving, like the driver's position. Okay. I think uh, I did that probably in November, December. Uh, so now myself, you have a chauffeur? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm the only one that drives. Uh, I don't let anyone drive me around. People don't know how to fucking drive. This uh, is true. Um, but no, I think, uh, I, I let, I let, um, uh, I was blessed to get, uh, two imports, if you will, uh, two, two guys from Ecuador. Awesome. Um, they were Nick's wife's family and, uh, I put them in the driver's position of, Hey, this is what I want. This is what I want you to replicate. Okay. My house is it's not rocket science. Right. Right. Like it's, it's tile on walls. <laughs> laminate on floors, white paint, right? Quit oversimplifying. It's, You're creating an entire new market of um, property investors. Now. It's it's uh it's it's not difficult. Where I shine is quality, um, and more uh, along the lines of like my detail for for little stuff and mm -hmm. perfection. And they were actually very, they like. <laughs> They take stuff uh, to the point where uh, we just listed. Uh, you probably saw it, that nice yeah. big White House so the other badass. day, dude. That was the cleanest inspection report I've ever really done. from it your was, buyer. Yeah, it was. It That's was, cool. It was. I, I like. I didn't know what. To, I was like, "What do I have to fix?" That's a hell of a testament. Uh, like it was. That crazy. means they were doing stuff that you might not even have asked them to do. So, so that that's a testament to my team. Yeah. Because they've taken the last like three or four and they like studied them. And then when they were getting this house ready for the market, they made sure to look at what went wrong on the yep. others and then double check before this one hit the market. Hey, the smartest people in the world are the ones who don't beat themselves up for mistakes, but they don't make them again. Yeah. You know? So you're going to, so it's a, a buddy of ours told us this story and he said, you're going to make a mistake. Just don't be dumb enough to make it twice. Yeah, right? right. And I've made plenty of mistakes multiple times. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with uh, like just trusting other people. It's really hard in this business uh, to be successful and to like trust someone else with your money, yep. trust someone else with your checkbook, trust them with your job site, right? Trust them with your clients. Like, it, it, this business isn't for the faint of heart. Yeah. Um, but then again, like neither is a restaurant. Could you imagine like going? No. In, like I came up in the food and bev industry. Really? Like I could never go back to that. That's a very hard way. My sister is big in that. Um, this last two years, very hard on her endeavors. Very, she's very successful. Very successful. Well, no, I mean, um, you know what? Just mcdonald's i mean that's all we have to live on right yeah like we don't need restaurants or right. people to cook for us there's right. mcdonald's and groceries <laughs> from walmart that's right man yeah. um yeah. the bigger the corporation the more i'm all in on buying from them absolutely you yes. know what the most uncool thing about cool people is there's just not enough of them that brings me to what we were talking about again before we were going on about what the fuck's wrong with everybody oh yeah and yeah. I, it's just, it's troubling. 40%, what was it, 40% of the people yeah, what quit was their that? job? How like, many people quit their job, 40, Mike? That 40, was a crazy stat. I mean, 40% of their people, it was something like 40% of well, it's Americans weird to, quit their job, right? Yeah, because the unemployment numbers are based on... Oh, yeah. So it's, it's on it's people very, in the workforce. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you're on your couch... <laughs> And you haven't been working for the last year. You're not part of that number, so you didn't lose a job or get a job. Well, I don't, I don't know about you, but I... Yeah, there's actually um about... Shit, that's scary. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no, there's there's the about 11 million um, jobs that are actually opened. How many? There's 11 million jobs that are, that are open are and available open this month. And about 40% of that, um, apparently... There's a lot of people just quitting and not even applying. I of think course. half of those 11 million jobs are hot tar... Flat roof applica application. You know the the thing though is uh, like, um, it's 
it's tough. And I, I'm not going to blame, like, I'm not going to play the blame game or, or anything like that, but it's really, really difficult, um, again, to stay positive. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're the leader and when you own the business and people are looking at you all the time, you have to put that fucking that you bet that face on right that Calm, we're okay cool we're collected be good right yep, confident um even though sometimes you're like oh fuck oh yeah but anyway where i was going with that is i think uh i have never again this we started this conversation with like i've never lived through such a perfect storm mm -hmm. and whatever this shit storm is is just unbelievably weird in the sense that like people don't want to work no like whatever's been done whatever permeated the ether that we all breathed it's just taken some really good people completely down man like, i i first of all it's proven you're a loner i'm kind of a loner but I'm not in that when I'm around good people, I leave with more energy. And I'm like, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I want to be around that person again, those people again. Those are my people. That was great. I'm fe I feel empowered. I feel more confident. We need people. People yeah. need people. Yeah. We, you know, uh, we are, and not to get too new agey, although I'm way into a lot of that stuff. We're not, we're one big organism. We all affect each other. If your negative energy comes into me, hopefully my positive energy is big enough to over, overcome yours with love in a loving way so that you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then when you lock everyone up, scare everyone, so they're all afraid and alone, that's not a good place to be. No. If you're afraid, you need to get around people. They don't feel safe. They feel like troubled. Like there's so much going on. Information is traveling so quickly. It's all most of the quick traveling information is not accurate. Mm -hmm. um, the New York Times or Post, whichever one is, came out about a certain laptop, and it's now. Oh yes, that exists. Two years ago, you said that you're off YouTube, you're off Insta, you're off Facebook, you're off Twitter, you're over there on like Rumble or some shit that steve bannon started because you got no other way to talk you know what i'm saying you and now oh no yeah we've confirmed it not a ru not russian misinformation we 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 definitely are in a time where you can be silenced and ostracized incredibly quickly and i don't i i don't see that changing i do it's it's going to take a little bit of work, but um, but I, I I think that machine is well underway, and it's been it's been rolling for a long time. Well, there's and I think people are I, I think people are waking up to it. Is uh, I think a lot more people are awake than people like you and me realize, because people like you and me are just looking around going. You, there's no way you can really believe that yeah. that's true, person. I, I think, I think we, I think we know that there are more people awake than the media is putting out there. I'm very outspoken, <laughs> in a in a nice way. Uh -huh. When I'm about to get on the lift at Breckenridge in Colorado, and people automatically just gravitate. I had a guy follow me off the the lift and come find me halfway down the mountain and be like hey uh what you were saying about so and so such and such i don't really rec it was something that i'd do with um, something yes and i was like yeah man what's up he was like well i mean there's just i i i, I want to say that how, how are you so bold that you just say that i was like well you know i'm 6'3 i'm 290 and i've been through a lot i just don't really care anymore but, but what is is it that is it that? I don't think so. I think there's a weird confidence. It's not an arrogance that everything's going to be all right. And I'm coming at people with more of a, there's no reason to be so afraid. Are there some bad things going on? Yes, but there's a lot of good going on as well. Let's dial in but on I, that. I think the hardest part for me is, is like, uh, so I have, uh, uh, like I said, there's five brothers. Two. It's amazing. Two of the five of us are employed by, one's employed by 
a, a city, like a government. Mm -hmm. The other is employed by a private company. And it amazes me because we were all raised in the same house. And three of the five of us uh, have a little bit more rebel in them mm -hmm. than the two that rely on their uh -huh. paycheck from – from someone else. I got stuff to say about that and, too. And I think that the what's heartbreaking to me is is to see there's this age gap um right now where uh and I don't actually know the ages that I'm just going to throw them out here but like let's just say 18 to 28 that age gap is the is the ultra in my mind the ultra like uh robotic ones that are kind of playing the game that the powers that be want to yeah. be played. I started talking to some younger uh, nieces and nephews and like younger generation kids, mm -hmm. younger than the 18 uh, in, and just, you know, like uh, uh, just like, for instance, the Lauren at the salon, mm -hmm. she has two young boys. And I don't know their ages, uh, but you know, like, 12 and 14 or something like that. Like they don't have, they're, they're not on Facebook. They're not on social media, like in, a, in, in a sense of like, and it's interesting because their perspective on life is so different than some of the other kids who are like exposed to certain social media outlets mm -hmm. at an early age. Right. So I'm starting to see like a little bit of positive in my soul, so yeah, to speak right. of, Hey, you know what? Maybe not the this group of shitheads, but mm -hmm. this group, we got some potential here, right? Yeah. And I think that the more we allow people to think for themselves and then empower our kids to, you know, to to just be and don't steer them in any one way or direction, I think I think we'll be okay. I don't know what we do with the middle ground people though. Yeah. Uh like my labor force and who I can hire has diminished. Um, I went from having like three, uh, what I would call a crews, meaning they're like my, I have three of my best crews mm -hmm. down to one. Yeah. Just in the last six months. Yeah. That's a very, um, confusing occurrence. We, we have work. I mean, we can find material as much as it's gone yeah. up and it's still hard to find, but you can find mm -hmm. it. Right. But we have work. Right. We have material. We have access to capital. Are those guys going and working for somebody else, or are they just not working? I, I, Here's what I find. The labor, the field labor. Hey, man, um, I know I fucked that last job yeah. up, but I really need work, and I've changed. I'll communicate. I'll mm. send before, during, and afters, and I'll stick with my price. If I give you, if I tell you eight grand to pour that patio, I'll do it for eight. I'm not going to get in the middle of it and then hold you hostage and tell you it's 9500 the night before I pour. Okay, I need this, this, and this done. First one goes okay. Second one, we get in the middle of it. I need more money. And I'm just like, boy. Like, what I tell our people, our sales folks and our admin folks, our client care staff. Sure. It does not take very much right now to stand out. It takes less right now than any other time. And I'm, I'm 43. I'm not sitting up here like... Right. Mr. Old Codger back. You know? I said I'm 40, and you know? I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at this shit like, yo, I'm not that old, and and we have some fucking problems. We do, like, like with with contractors, with like with expectations of work, yeah. the work that's being done. Well, what about your uh, what about your like transaction coordination, all those people involved there? Now, I know you probably use some folks that we both consider friends when you can, and that probably makes things smooth. But even there, I went and picked a check up off a of lien. Pay your bills, folks, or I will fucking lien you. And the rigmarole at the front debt i was just like whoa bro yeah. what's going on and then you know i'm telling the the gals in my office it's got to be because they can't find anyone else so, so it's interesting dude though. i went to a hotel the guy told me he was on his fourth shift in a row yeah 32 hours of work in well, a row and so we're talking about workforce and and i know we're in the in the construction workforce if yeah. you will but like 
there are no employees anywhere. Yeah. I have Restaurants never. Restaurants are closed I for have, days on end. I have never seen. Neither have I. Where is everyone? I don't know. What are they paying for everything with? Though? Did they? There's did, no stimmies anymore. Did the? Uh, did they? Um, did they all get? Uh, what's that show from HBO? Did they all get like you know morphed off the planet like yeah. overnight? Oh, you leftovers. Know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a crazy. Great show. Great yeah. show. Awesome soundtrack. Oh man. Fuck, yes. Man. Great. My God. You know I will say that this soundtrack's about, next about, level. I think about my favorite shows, uh, whether it's HBO, Showtime, Netflix. Uh, they or even Amazon, uh, they've the ones with the best soundtracks, like tend to be like the best. Like I don't know, they just got it going on. I wonder and if the sound plays a huge part. Well, I wonder of if the addiction to it. They all if that all goes hand in hand. Uh, do you watch Westworld? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Great I set. I I, uh, I watched. Uh, so are they? Is it still going? Or is I it? think there's going to be a four. So I, but I, everything got fucked up with. I stopped. So I haven't seen the third one. The yeah, I. It's it's a it's a conundrum. I want to believe that it'll change. I love working hard. I take a lot of my identity from that. I'm not just going to go dig a ditch on a Sunday afternoon if I need rest. <laughs> when I lay around, I feel like. A yeah. useless piece of shit. When I do stuff, I feel awesome. So even if it's just I'm gonna go organize my or already organized garage, it makes me feel great. But you eat you like that's because we're, though, we're relatively speaking, we're the same age. Well, so, and because we've both had some success trying the hard work and effort games. Yes. If you've never tried it and all you think is, ooh, sweat, it hurts, but then you, you're never gonna know you used the to have, freedom. I mean, we always have the Jerry they used to be the Jerry Springer crowd, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the ones that would sit home and watch Jerry Springer. Yeah, right? you drive through certain or parts Maury, of town, right? Like, everyone's home. We like, know what's going on. Yeah, like you it was very like that was the thing. I don't know, man. Montel's my jam, bro. Uh, I don't want. I've never really watched any of them. Um, but, but like, it's it's worse now. Yeah. And 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 I don't know what they're doing or how the electricity is staying on or the bill is getting paid right. or I, I I don't know where they're getting it from. I don't know. I don't know if there was a real redistribution through the PPP and SBA loans. There is definitely. Uh, I don't think so. So you, so you know, I moved. Uh, I moved into that high rise. Yeah, right? there is more. Such a fucking bragger. I know. There is more, <laughs> and I only have to drive up three, uh, three levels in my garage, and there's like nine. Uh, so that tells you how high I, I yeah. am on the chain. Right. I get to park at the at the bottom of the the garage. <laughs> yeah. I drive through just on those three levels. I drive through probably like. 20 or 30 million dollars worth of cars mm -hmm. on like the those that like those two turns and i just just a few g-wagons and like, shit in there like bro. bentley's rolls royces ferraris lamborghinis yellow all, ones and like stuff. dude i've n where is it where did it come from i don't know and and then how how like how does crypto the bro dunk no <laughs> <laughs> the fucking NFTs or what the NT? Yeah, NFTs, man. Yeah, like what? It's that you need to make a Tony Sicilian NFT. This is what they tell me. Embed everything you know, and then once the person who buys it from you has learned everything, then they can sell it on the secondary market and make money. Because while they were learning that, you were growing your brand, so your NFT is now worth more than it was when this guy bought it. So I make money off of the growth. Yes, because or I only sell it once. Rand, no, you're selling it to so many people. They all want to learn your systems and processes and your approach. Mm. Like you know, you said, "Do what I say, not what I do." Yeah. Distill what you do. Embed that in your NFT, and then sell it. You know what this makes me think of? Like, it makes me think of like some sci-fi thing where. You know, you could package up my brain. Yes, bro. Pull out the pull out the SD card. Metaverse, man. Go copy it and then sell it. Very soon, we won't even have to work out. A workout professional will work out. He will download the workout into a USB, and then I'll plug it into my Metaverse brain, and then I'll be ripped, bro. 
shredded. Well, I just had a uh, lipo oh. and skin removal, so uh, I'm pissed if that happens because what I just went through. Uh, I to, think it's gonna to happen. get this lovely body uh, was is you're looking ridiculous. You're looking very it's Paul Bunyan-y. But I, I I don't know what we do with the labor force. And I, the other thing is not only are, are not only do we not have good labor, we don't have skilled labor that's reasonable. Right. So you used to be able to again in the trades there are day laborers and you know maybe they were a hundred hundred and fifty a yep. day. Those guys are now two fifty three hundred oh, yeah. a day and they don't even know how to lay tile. No, right? They can demo and that's like, about it. Yeah, they know how to. They barely know how to swing a sledgehammer. Mm -hmm. They definitely don't know how to swing a sledgehammer and then pick up the trash and put it in the goddamn trash bag. That that takes an entire separate fucking crew. That's uh that that takes an entire training session. How we get our how we get our trash packed up so you're um obviously an investor a fixer a flipper you uh hold some rent them but then the other side of what you do we haven't really talked about and we'll wrap up here but i want to want you to talk about we've talked about rates yeah but how can you help the the regular everyday property investor be more profitable be happier uh how can you get them in deals other people can't get them in i think the i think the interesting thing about real estate is uh and i think it's the reason that it's growing as fast as it seems to be growing and i don't know if that's just because we're in it but is because it's 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 cool are there more people at your meetups every time absolutely and um, i i think it is still growing I, I, absolutely you mentioned rich dad poor dad uh robert's uh his audience is bigger than it's ever been and that book's 20 something years old yeah it was the first real well, real estate investing investing do it yourself did you see uh guru book out there 45 was just uh on stage with um yes with uh cardone yes and i was like now that's that's impressive. It is. That's impressive. I agree with you. Um, but I don't, you know, so I don't know. I don't aspire to be those guys. Um, I don't wake up every day thinking like, oh, I want to be, you know, I want to be the next president. I want to have a million dollars. I want to drive a Ferrari. I don't, I think when you. You're overqualified to be the next president, if you, Tony. If you, if you lock yourself into that, then, then you start chasing it. And, right. and I'm not saying like don't have a a rewards wall or sure. you know uh, or, or a long term like plan yeah no yeah. not not that it's just i don't have a set anything mm -hmm. it's just uh actually that's a lie i did have a set goal to get uh the new hybrid f150 oh yeah and i grabbed one uh, recently so i achieved that goal i was happy right, right. Like, i waited for it i waited for it to come out i hunted for the right one and i got it what like color? so I'm, I'm happy black yeah, beautiful. Of course, black. Awesome. Always black on black. Um, but I think uh, I think you have to network, uh, and I hate that saying that your net worth is your network or it's something true. like that, or your network is your net worth. Yeah. I, Nick says it. Other people say it. Mm -hmm. I, I hate sayings, but it's very true. You are who your friends are. That's my dad's saying. Um, so when I used to hang out with the drinkers and the partiers, and mm -hmm. that's what I did, right? Yeah. Um, I would hang out with my friends that would smoke cigarettes. I'd go out. And smoke cigarettes with my. I'm an asthmatic. What the fuck was I doing sure. smoking cigarettes back right. in the day, right? Um, so I think if you surround yourself with the right core of people, then you can grow. As far as uh, real estate goes, I mean, Nick and I are always just trying to help people uh, do the rinse and repeat with the rental game. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't understand the tax advantages, the you know, and then there are people that demonize landlords, which yep. again, there's good and bad in all of it. Just like but, everything. but, but if you really want wealth, like wealth, like long term wealth, right. like not go buy a fucking Ferrari, yeah. Lamborghini because you're financing it at you know two percent no. interest uh, wealth. Like no, not that. No. Like if you want wealth, compound interest wealth. You 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 <laughs> hold hard assets in real estate yeah. and 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 you sit and you wait. Like like you don't you don't get there overnight. If it is too good to be true, if it happens really fast, it's gonna go really fast. Yeah. That's the, is, isn't that the millionaire, uh, the the lotto, like, isn't that the lotto curse, yes. right? It's uh, like, yes. when they win the lotto, it's, they're, 
a lot of those kids who play pro sports too yeah. they get in there they get a bunch it's before they were ready the universe knows when you're ready and when yeah. you're not ready um are you guys hiring and if so what divisions of your companies are you hiring for I am not, we're not hiring in the lending space. Um, you know, lending space is tough right now. And, and God bless everyone that's, it, today's the end of the month. Like it's, mm -hmm. God bless the title companies and the, um, and the, uh, the title company is definitely hiring. Um, but, uh, but no, we're, we're, my, my construction world um, is, is I'm, I'm pulling back. Uh, and we, you know, it's probably another conversation for another day, but I'm starting to scale back. I think, um, I, like the hairs on the back of my neck are up and I, I, I'm not sure of what's coming. Yeah. It's weird. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and I, I just want to be, I just want to be prepared for yeah. whenever that comes. I don't want to have be over leveraged and have, you know, uh, I'm still buying houses if I can. I have, I, believe it or not, I had not bought a house all year. Really? Which blows my mind because we're we're tomorrow's April first. Are you pretty much your you and Nick are pretty much your own acquisitions yeah, team? Yeah. Um talk to uh talk to the audience about how they could actually earn a little money if they referred you on an acquisition. Yeah. Qualified acquisition. And I know if it doesn't work for you, your network, because you mm -hmm. and me and all of our friends, we all actively network. Yeah. We all want to probably even network more than we do. Sometimes there's just not time in the day or energy. Yeah. But yeah. if someone knows if their uh if their sweet little grandmother has a has a home, she doesn't want to fuck with a realtor, she kind of wants to get in and out, get her money, move on, move to the assisted living, what and they reach out to you, what's gonna happen? You know that the you bring up a really valid point. I, I think the investor has such a stigma like a bad stigma True. uh because it's like oh well you know you're taking advantage of grandma yep. and that that was never my that was i i always wanted to get into grandma's house and talk to her and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and then just be able to perform so when i'm when i'm talking to other wholesalers especially at the meetups and stuff that we're hosting and and you know just the people that we're trying to uh, educate in the space a little bit. It's more about like, guys, you have to be able to perform. So one of the reasons why I get kind of harsh on the virtual wholesalers is because they're making offers yeah. without the intent of closing on that transaction. And so there you have grandma, right? And grandma's like, oh my God, I'm going to get this money. It's more money than, you know, my realtor told me I could get. I, you know, and they're making life changing decisions based on that offer and you have no ability to close on it yeah and i think that that's the ethical piece right that that a lot of the newer younger whatever real estate people play and that's the game that i think they're they're winning right now because you could trip up upwards like i said before yeah. but i think the danger is when you can't perform you know that's that's the that's the bad thing for everyone involved. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I'm buying houses. Uh, you just you know go to the uh, uh, actually message us on Instagram at the Sicilian Brothers REI and um, or t you know email me TJ Sicilian at gmail .com or I will give you my phone number, but you should just text no, me. No, don't do that. Yeah, I'll give you his phone <laughs> number if you text me. I don't want you to get crazy Nigerian hacker text uh, messages. I'm, I, I'm not doing roofs. Uh, I don't know how you do it. Don't do it. I'll fucking like, come steal yeah, all your no, material. I, I don't do roofs. Hey, man, this has uh, been a long time in the making, and I yeah. enjoyed it immensely. Well, that was great. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Tony's just a really good time, and the time just flew right by. Uh, if you want to reach out to Tony, we put his contact info up, and he dropped his social as well as his email. If you want to get with me, you can always hit me up on Instagram at Jess from the Northwest. I'm on TikTok and Facebook as well. You can always email me if you want to work together live at autographconstruction.com. I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. And if you have ideas, people that you think I should have on the Jess Marshall podcast, shoot me a message. I'd love to know who you want to hear me interview. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all next time.